All right. So Minnesota lost 20 to 16. Uh, that was hard to watch. Uh, Cooper Rush completed 60% of his passes for 325 yards, 8.1 yards per attempt, two touchdowns, one pick, was sacked three times. Quarterback rating of 92.2. Cedric Wilson also completed a ball for 35 yards. Um, ground game, better today. Um, uh, Elliott carried the ball 60, 16 times for 50 yards and 3.1 yards per carry. Pollard, 7 for 26. Cooper Rush had one carry for two. So, 24 carries for 78 yards, 3.3 yards per carry. That's the best the run game numbers have looked all year. So, all right there. Um, in the receiving game, Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb had quite the day. Cooper going 8 for 13 for 122 yards and the game-winning score. C.D. Lamb, 6 of 8 for 112. And Cedric Wilson had caught all three of his targets for 84 yards and that long 73-yard touchdown. After that, it's kind of a whole lot of nothing. Um, the most notable thing is... Dalton Schultz only caught two of seven targets, and that's pretty low. So, uh, there were seven of 14 on third down, obviously 50%. One of two in the red zone, obviously 50%. There are minus two in the turnover margin, 32 minutes and 32 seconds of possession, and 11 penalties for 96 penalty yards. Now, Minnesota, uh, Kirk, 23 of 35, 65.7%. 184 yards, 5.3 yards per attempt, one score, no picks, was sacked once, had a quarterback rating of 88.3, Jefferson also threw a pass, didn't complete it. Uh, Cook carried the ball 18 times, 78 yards, uh, 4.3 yards per carry, three carries for Kirk for 18, Madison two for five, Ham carried the ball for no yardage gained. So they had 24 carries for 101 yards, 4.2 yards per carry. Now... In the receiving game, um, Thielen, 6 of 9 for 78 yards and a score. Conklin, 5 of 7 for 57 yards. And after that, it gets stale real quick. Jefferson, 2 of 4 for 21 yards. Osborne, 2 of 3 for 10. Luke Stocker, 1 of 1 for 7. Herndon, 1 of 1 for 7. Marset, 1 of 1 for 6. Ham caught all three of his targets for 3 yards. Cook didn't catch a single one of his targets. One of them being a dropped screen. Madison did catch all of his targets, all two of them, for negative five yards. Now, they're one of 13 on third down. That is good for a whopping 7.7%. They're one of two in the red zone, 50%, plus two in the turnover margin, 27 minutes and 28 seconds of possession, seven penalties for 57 penalty yards. Now we get to... I want to say good stuff. It's not. Um, offensively, just what was that? That was horrible. Um, the offensive line, I felt like, played not very well, mainly the interior. Um, it felt like there were a lot of holdings and a lot of miscues up front. And I, uh, some of those pressures were kind of more based off of the fact that they were doing the bootlegs again, uh, they kind of went away for that for a little bit of this, you know, first half of the year here. Um, but they've done in the last two years prior quite often. They kind of went back to it. They were sitting on the naked boots. So some of those pressures were like that, but I thought the interior played kind of horribly tonight. Um, I kind of thought the play calling itself was very stale and it almost felt like it was straight out of 2005. And then 7.7%, really? Really? 7.7%. And Jefferson only had four targets all night. You need to get that more involved just because he is one of your best players. He is your playmaker, or at least one of them. You have three main playmakers on this offense. You have Cook, you have Thielen, and you have Jefferson. Now, Cook ended up with 20, well, 20 total targets, I guess, 18 carries, two targets, but you tried to get him the ball 20 times. Thielen, nine targets. It's pretty good. Jefferson, four targets. Osborne and Ham have a combined six in this game. You can't have it that way. 
And it was just kind of like, after those first two drives, they just kind of like, well, I guess we don't need to actually throw past the first down marker anymore. So, play calling as a whole was just horrible. Like, the whole offensive plan tonight felt just putrid. I didn't understand it. Because in the beginning, it didn't seem like they were going to go the conservative route like I thought they might. Where they were testing digs deep. They were going deep. They were trying to, you know, push the ball down the field. And I was like, oh, this is different. Because I was kind of like, well, when I heard Cooper Rush was officially in, I was like, well, maybe that will open up to just lean on Dalvin Cook in the run game. Just don't play mistake football and get away with it, maybe. And they decided to land somewhere in the middle, and it didn't work at all. Uh, defensively, I just hope Daniel Hunter is okay, because this defense is different with and without 99. Hope he comes back. Now, for the most part, they kind of played pretty close to how I expected them to if Cooper Russ were to be in the game like he was. Um, aside from the corners, I thought most of it played up to par. There was a lot of just playing run fits, and worried mostly about not getting gashed in the run game because they had a backup quarterback. Now, I do recognize that leaves your corners on an island. So I did expect them to play a little better than that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, them hitting some big plays in the passing game while trying to do that, I think was kind of the correct call. Just the problem was the offense could literally do nothing. Now... I do think they need to improve that third down defense from this week going into the next week. 50% feels a little high, but that's just part of this game. They could sustain drives. Minnesota could not. Now, overall, th this thing was just sad. Um, like, most of the issues here coming on the offensive side of the football, I think. Like, 1 of 13 on third down is just completely unacceptable. Ham only had one less target than Jefferson did. He had one more target than Dalvin Cook. And we kind of go back into that conversation of why aren't you trying to manufacture touches for your actual good playmakers? It's pretty obvious at this point Minnesota isn't getting their guys in space and it's really starting to show. So, and to me this honestly feels like a fireable offense. Because there was even a thing that, um, I think they said it right after the half, where um, Delvin Cook was quoted, and he said, like, uh, Tafoya, the uh, sideline reporter, mentioned not having enough energy coming out of the half. How many teams list that as a problem? Like, that is not a normal issue to have. So, even though Zimmer may not be necessarily a bad or horrible kind of head coach, I do think it's becoming painstakingly obvious that you will not win anything of substance while he is in charge. So, both of those things can be true. He's basically just a mediocre head coach. So, that kind of just means like, well, he's okay being a wild card. He's okay playing the playoffs on the road. He's okay not winning that game and basically just basing all of it on we're not the worst, so please don't fire me. So I feel like that's kind of where this is going. And like this, this offense overall just has too much talent for this to be happening. Like when we talk about this offense in general, it has a lot of young talent. Um, there's only four starting players on this offense that are not on a rookie contract. Those four being Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, Thielen, and now Brian O'Neill. Outside of those four, everyone else is a rookie contract. This is a super young offense. Are these really the minds we want developing these players? To me, that answer is a straight up no. I don't think this is a forward thinking kind of staff. I think it's more like they are content just being there as opposed to actually doing things. So that is what it is to me. And at just at a certain point, enough is enough. I don't know how many more games they can have like this and actually continue with this plan. But 
And I know after this game, they're going to try to push the Kirk Cousins narrative like, oh no, he can't play in prime time. He's the worst. And I do think on that second drive, um, clearly there were some issues with the one deep ball to Jefferson and the one throw to Conklin that was just not good. Just it, Well, at least it didn't look good. Kirk was very angry after that one, so I don't know if he expected something else to open up that wasn't Conklin, or if that was like he expected him to run up the field, so he threw it. But regardless, it didn't look good, and after that, it just felt like they were done taking shots. Uh, I don't think Clint Kubiak put him in any kind of position to actually help him succeed tonight, and just didn't really give him a chance. And so I don't really want to push that Kirk Cousins narrative. Yes, he could have played better. Yes, he should have played better. But at the end of the day, Clint Kubiak, bigger problem than Kirk. So that's where I'm putting my focus. Uh, I would like to know your guys' thoughts down below. Like and subscribe. Super helpful. Until next time, I've been Jell and Doom.